Hey, it's Sam here and in this video I'm going to review your resume and provide you with some actionable tips and feedback to hopefully help you uh, get closer to your goal of landing a role in tech sales um, in the, the six-figure range. So uh, off the bat, the, the kind of overall structure and format of the resume is pretty decent. Um, I would say the key points that I wanted to bring up were adding career accomplishments, uh, a company summaries and just some minor formatting things. So to get started into the review, I'm just going to zoom in here just now. But uh, this, all this information is fine. How you've laid it out is absolutely fine. I think the only thing here is, is on your LinkedIn profile, add the URL as a clickable link, um, just to make that clear, rather than make someone making having to make someone Google Google your name or search for your name in LinkedIn. So that's one of the things I would say about that. Um, here, what I would recommend is in this top section, it's pretty much prime real estate for the resume. And uh, what I would recommend here is actually adding a career accomplishment section. Even though you've had kind of one uh, one ma major organization in your company, uh, in your experience, you can still add a career accomplishment section. And essentially what it is, is three to five bullets of some of your biggest wins. But what I recommend is with these three to five bullets, tweak those um, and make those the most relevant to your role. What that enables you to do is bring the most relevant of your experience from your career and put it front and center in your resume. So just a quick example using uh, my resume uh, as an example, and this is what a finished product looks like when it comes to me working with clients. So you'll notice that I have uh, put here uh, three major accomplishments. So I lead with career accomplishments and this would be particularly relevant if I was applying for a recruitment role that was in the clinical space. So what I've done here is just highlighted, you know, my clinical recruitment experience. So that's what I would do here if I was applying for a clinical recruitment role. If the role was focused on talent acquisition and leadership or rather a leadership uh, TA role, then what I can do with the career accomplishment section is add a bullet and saying that I previously managed, a you know, the team of five talent team members for a global global health tech organization with 2,000 employees. Uh, and that's how I would use the career accomplishment section strategically in order to make it most relevant for the role. So that's what I'd recommend for your profile. Um, you know, and it, it can be two or three bullets, but just give give an area where you can tweak uh, to and, and change that, the change those bullets depending on the role that you express interest in. Also, what I'd recommend is adding a company summary. Uh, company summaries are really useful for showing the, the viewer uh, the size and scope of the organization. Uh, and it also adds a little bit more structure and, and kind of readability to the resume. So again, I'll jump back to my resume as an example. So if I want you to encourage, or rather, I want to encourage you to think if you were hiring me, if you were hiring for a recruiter, for your team and you got my resume and you were looking at it and let's say you know one of my longest stints was at Babylon uh, and you might be able to glean from this this bullet here and a couple bullets that it was you know clinical related I'm talking about nurses and physicians um, but you don't really know about the, the, the size and scope of Babylon so if I add a company summary you know it can be anywhere from you know two to five lines if you want uh, and I've said, you know, Babylon uh, is slash was a global digital healthcare and AI organization. They closed half a billion, 2,000 employees worldwide, operations in five countries. Now, I'm being very clear about the size, scope, but also the structure that I can operate in. And it's also just kind of interesting to the, you know, the, the reader or if the re basically uh, the reader doesn't have to Google that information. So I'm not familiar with, with uh, Damascus in terms of I don't know how many employees they have. I think I saw somewhere online it was like a startup. So so I want to understand, you know, the the, the growth. Um, so just a, a, you know a few lines about Damascus. Uh, the reason it's also uh, Im important is because sometimes it can draw parallels with the organisation. So. You know, here if I've got 2,000 employees in like multiple countries, that might make me more appealing to an organization that is either maybe growing in multiple countries or, or has a plan to get to multiple countries or an already com uh, existing company that deals, you know, with uh, internationally or has multiple um, locations uh, or, or is of a similar size or is also, you know, going through a, a funding round. That's where you can kind of draw parallels. I mean, it doesn't need to be a like for like match, but it just uh, also shows that you can communicate clearly in writing. It can also help during interviews where uh, you might get asked, walk me through your background and you, you know, being able to have this information at the tip of your tongue to provide someone information about a company that they might not have heard about before. 
Uh, here, I think you, what you've done is you've got you've held basically multiple roles. Um, what I would recommend is either because they've got the exact same dates, you, you might want to put say manager of strategic relations in corporate partnerships, and then you know uh, you could do something like this project manager here. Uh, and just kind of get rid of it. And that way you can kind of get rid of this to show that you held two roles. Uh, it, it's not major, it's, this is more like stylistic thing, but um, it, it saves you kind of uh, having to split them out. But if you wanted to, let's say you had three major accomplishments that were specifically related to project management and, th and three that were related to that or whatever the number is, then you can break them out into that. So I had two different roles for the same company and what I've done here is I said, you know, when I was a TA consultant for the US, I've brought out specific US things and then in Canada, uh, I've put them under Canada. So you, 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 that's optional whether you want to do that. I would do that if they were quite um, distinct roles. Uh, and I know you've done that here in Media Director, Video Marketing Manager. So it was just uh, if this is separate as well, keep it consistent. But otherwise, uh, it's absolutely fine as as is, and you can probably just uh, clean it up just by keeping them under the one line. Um, you had mentioned that you're trying to get into tech sales. Uh, so what I would recommend is in the career accomplishment section, because this is further down in your resume, I would talk about you know how you've increased sales for a you know rapidly growing organization um, in the US. Talk about maybe where the sales came from, generating 109k in net revenue. 109k in net revenue is is decent, but if the revenue last year was 100k, then it's not much of an increase. So maybe talk about the increase. If it was zero revenue, then you you've got a great increase. You know, if it was 50k, then figure out what the math is. So maybe increase it up a percentage just because it, it, it means a little bit more to uh, a company um, in terms of growth also if you do that if you do get a good solid sales metric because you're looking for tech sales bring that right up to the career accomplishment section so that you can highlight that sales experience uh, and then just a uh, minor notes about the qualifications profile I would actually get rid of the uh, kind of what I've highlighted just because it's very vague um, because uh, you know anyone, let's say, have a look strong interpersonal skill. Like I could pretty much put copy and paste this and put in the, this in my resume, and it wouldn't really mean much. Um, whereas what's more impactful is the the quantifiable accomplishments that you have throughout your resume, which I actually wouldn't change. I forgot to say these are really solid metrics. You speak very naturally and clearly about kind of results and growth, so I wouldn't change a thing there. And um, the qualifications profile can take it or leave it. This is just a, a little bit fluffy, saying you know expert in understanding clients' business and challenges, working cross functionally like that doesn't mean anything whereas if you said um, you know uh, partnered with a, a fortune 1000 organization specializing in agriculture tech that's very specific about understanding a client's business and goals by like, listing the industry the size working cross-functionally to meet team goals is just a little bit vague so I'd get rid of that or maybe even get rid of the whole qualifications profile um, uh, the race 140 over four years is, is really decent. I would probably just put that into whatever it was uh, in another bullet elsewhere in your resume. Um, so basically the qualification profiles, I wouldn't say is adding much value. Uh, the rest of it seems absolutely fine. I'd get rid of this here. I know that I maybe messed up the formatting here, but just, there's no need for this little note here. I would just get rid of it. Um, other than that, I think the the resume pretty solid. You know, you've chosen an appropriate font. Uh, could it do with a nice little bit of tidier formatting and just to make it a little bit more polished? Maybe. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I would I would maybe recommend kind of you know this this well, but you know it's not perfect. And document designers would probably uh, mess all over it. But it's, I would say it's a, a decent enough looking resume where there's you know tight formatting, some appropriate use of white space, uh, a, a decent enough font. Yours is similar as well. I think it's pretty decent. I think if you add some company summaries and just kind of um, move that about, it will give it a little bit more structure. Um, but other than that, this is a pretty solid resume. I will add as well um, that you kind of just beyond the resume, based on what you said, that you're looking for software tech sales and looking to land a role in the kind of high six figures. I would say one of your biggest challenges is going to be that anyone that is applying for those roles, you know, those high six figure tech sales roles is going, going to have a fair amount of existing tech sales. So you're going to be up against applicants uh, and quite possibly senior applicants, you know, senior manager, even director of sales would earn that much depending on what the variable, variable compensation is. So candidly, if I was recruiting for a tech sales, you know, role that was in the six figures, high six figures, which would likely be be a leadership position, I, you know, 
even with the recommendations that I've made in the resume, I probably wouldn't move forward with your with your profile because you know if, if someone posted a high six figure tech sales role, they're going to have a, a fair amount of people. If a recruiter's got you know five people, ten five people that they're going to screen and, and spend that time with and say half an hour screen each time, then they're going to want someone that's got tech sales. Um, so highly unlikely that your resume alone is going to land a role in tech sales. I think some of your best options would be, you know, leveraging your network and finding out who, you know, who, who you might know that might be first and foremost already in tech sales and maybe uh, doing a bit of a gap analysis, understanding what their role is uh, and, and what their team tech typically looks for. You basically want to do a gap analysis on your existing experience and the, the experience that you might need to bridge the gap with somehow or at least speak to during interviews. Um, so I do think it will come via referral. Also, if you want a salary at 150 to 200 for tech sales, with no kind of prior tech, you know, tech industry sales, or at least not super apparent tech industry sales, I would say highly unlikely. There's very few organizations that will take the risk on a profile like that. Uh, the exception being is if, if, you know, a senior director or someone, uh, you know, above that in, in pay uh, knows you, knows your ability and is willing to take that risk. Your other option is to um, kind of pitch yourself uh, uh, to a, a, you know, hiring manager. Um, you've got some pretty good skills in terms of writing a crafted message. And, and basically, if you want to ask for a high, t like a tech sales role, like demonstrate your sales ability through through kind of cold outreach is, is one option as well. Um, but I do think that uh, it's going to come from the network and it won't, I, I think it's highly unlikely to come as a kind of cold applicant, you know, no one, not knowing anyone at the company, not being with, from the industry and asking for a six figure six figure tech sales role is, is highly unlikely, but uh, not impossible. So anyways, I hope the resume feedback was useful to you. Um, there's not, this is already a pretty solid resume. I think that just a few minor tweaks might help it bring it up a little bit, uh, but I, I do think it's a solid resume as is um, in terms of structure, formatting and content. So good luck.